It's that time of year where the insects are starting to make their way onto the plants. And Tom, let's talk about some of the insect pressure going on in canola. All right. Well, canola, has, uh, these rains have really invigorated the canola this year. It's, I think it's a wonderful looking crop, a lot of yield potential. And most of the aphid pressure is, is passed now, the flowering's passed, but I still think that if farmers with all the yield potential we have here need to not ignore this crop. Uh, there's a lot of pods out here that are appetizing to a couple of different potential pests, and so they shouldn't be ignoring it. Um, and keep, keep looking at it, making sure that they carry this through to harvest. What kind of insects are, are, are we seeing on the canola plants right well, now? Well, we still f find a few aphids, and I, I uh, have some uh, tur turnip aphids here. Um, like turnip aphids and cabbage aphids like to get up uh, near the, the tops of the plants. They feed on the flowers, and they'll sometimes feed on the uh, pods themselves and right. maybe cause them not to develop quite as fast. Um, I was able to find this patch because there's a lot of lady beetles around here that right. are wanting to eat these things. So, um, so that's one of the the pests. Right. Frankly, there's not enough here to worry about right now, but uh, um, it's one of the things that we've seen occasionally in some of the canola around the state. And if if it got to be high enough numbers on the terminals, they'd uh, probably have to treat. The two uh, insects that I'm concerned more about are, are three insects actually, diamondback moth, mm -hmm. corn earworm, and variegated cutworm that like to feed on the pods. Okay. Because they will directly go in and take those seeds out, so they're directly removing poten yield potential. And it just is important for the, per for the scout or producer to be out here and on a weekly basis, look and see what's going on. Uh, if you do it within a, you know, on a weekly basis, you should be able to catch anything that's coming in uh, before it causes too much damage and then may be able to make a decision on whether you need to treat or not. Now, as, as they're out scouting for these insects, what, what's kind of the threshold to where they actually need to treat? Um, with, uh, with pod feeding insects, uh, sometimes we look at, uh, I guess right now I would say, uh, with with the, the two pod feeding insects, I'm thinking of two larvae per um, plant. Really? Yeah. Okay. If you have two larvae per plant, that's a, that's an uh, economic threshold. Right. So, um, and sometimes these things will be surprising because there's a lot of litter underneath right. the, the ground here, and they uh, variegated cutworm likes to hide under there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to sometimes uh, get in the field and brush away that to really find them, and you'll find these things curled up. Um, I have a a picture from a few years ago where we had a bunch of them and it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but also be looking and examining the pods for, for holes that are you know, as they're uh, like the caterpillars are feeding. Right. But uh, for, the, for the two corn earworm and variegated cutworm we're talking about two per uh, plant or okay. two per square foot. What, what kind of treatment options are there for, for these insects? There is a lot, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, pyrethroids that they're sensitive to that uh, are fairly inexpensive to use. Uh, the key is to just make sure you get good pan canopy penetration with, mm -hmm. the, with the product so that it gets down into the, the plant itself and, and uh, uh, gets them. But uh, yeah, they, they shouldn't be too difficult to uh, control as long as you're getting good coverage. Okay, thank you much, Tom. Mm -hmm. And for more information about what we talked about, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.